the Donner Party, also known by some as the Donner Reed Party, was an ill-fated band of American pioneers who attempted to travel from the Midwestern state of Missouri uh, to California. And instead of going established routes and getting there in the four to six months that it normally took, they decided to trust in a shyster by the name of Hastings and take an unproven and untested cutoff known as the Hastings cutoff that was supposed to save you about three to four weeks. So they would be able to make their trip in three to five months instead of four to six. However, as a result of a couple of things, from taking an uncharted cutoff to just leaving later than they should have, they ended up trapped in the Sierra Nevada mountains in an early November winter in 1846-1847, and a majority of them did perish while trapped. Keto and crime, keto and crime, we uncover the grime on keto and crime. Keto and crime, keto and crime, now is the time for keto and crime. Hey everyone, Tracy here from Keto and Crime. Thank you so much to every single one of my patrons and channel members. You make this possible. And uh, you're one of the reasons I do this. And I thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if I haven't said it before, thank you. I'll sing it. Thank you. Thank you for hanging in there with me and letting me geek out, not making fun of me like a lot of other people do because I like weird stuff about crime and dark history. Re, re. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Any discussion of the Donner Party has to first start with a discussion about the theory or idea of manifest destiny. This was a term that was coined in 1845, just a year before that uh, ill-fated trip, when those here in the United States believed it was the United States' destiny to spread across the whole of its holdings from east to west. And that is what essentially drove the circumstances that would end with the Donner Party's untimely death and disaster. But basically, we were only about 43 years out from the Louisiana Purchase, from the exploration of Lewis and Clark, and just 10 years from Mexican, the Mexican War and Texas independence, which leads us to the state of California. As hard as it is to move to California today, it is even hard, it was even harder to move there almost 200 years ago. Think about it. The only way to California was across steep, rugged, rarely explored terrain which led to two very established routes of people that would go from east to west during what we consider the pioneer era of our country. Let's take a look at those established routes, shall we? Any discussion of it. And those two well-established routes to the California area were known as the Oregon Trail and the California Trail. And no, this is not the Oregon Trail that you played on your Apple a Max as a Gen X kid. But it was based on the same. All routes, including a kind of half route known as the Mormon Trail, all started around Independence, Missouri, and trekked pretty much the same route directly westward across the Midwest until you get to what we know as the Western Corridor there at Utah, Idaho, and then you go on into the extreme West Coast. But the Mormon Trail would take a southwest turn and end up at Salt Lake City because that's where the Mormons were going. Whereas the California Trail would turn upward into Idaho and then take another southwest turn across Nevada, straight across Nevada, 
and end up at Sutter's Mill, California, which is today known as Sacramento in extreme northern California. The Oregon Trail would go up following the California Trail to Fort Hall, Idaho, and then would end up all the way up at what is now Portland, Oregon. At that time, it was Oregon City, Oregon. So that were the established trails west. Well tested, well affirmed by the time that we get to the Donner Party. But why? Why did the Donner Party end up in such a bad situation if they were following established routes? Well, they weren't. And that's part of the problem. Let's continue. The Donner Party was following a shortcut that we will talk about in a little more in depth in just a moment that essentially was su supposed to cut off about three to four hundred miles of trekking straight across Nevada by diverting at Fort Bridger, Wyoming, going across the untested, untraveled Great Salt Lake Desert, which is about 80 miles of barren, unlivable area, and then rejoining both the Calif uh, rejoining the California Trail and the Oregon Trail uh, at Elk Pass in Nevada and then going straight to where they needed to go from there. But they were following this cutoff now known as the Hastings Cutoff, untested, unproven, and they were falling for the machinations of a madman. Let's talk about him. Lansford Warren Hayes, he was. He was also an attorney, but of course a lawyer is going to get themselves messed up in this. That was pretty well wrapped up in the theory of manifest destiny. And fell in love with the then Mexican-owned territory of California. He actually spent several years in Alta, California, and decided that the best way the United States could annex California is to do it in a bloodless revolution of sheer numbers. So he himself wrote and published the Immigrant's Guide to Oregon and California to introduce all those people in the East, especially new immigrants from Europe, to California. And it was in this book that he talked about the Hastings Cutoff, ignoring the, you know, the tested routes of the California, Oregon, and even Mormon Trail to get west. So he decided that the best way to, he had the theory that if he could get over 20,000 people to invade California, that it, essentially Mexico would just throw up their hands and let it go. And it would re become its own independent republic, much like that of Texas. And he himself would be in high office because he started all of this. So that was the reason for him writing the book, to facilitate his own, own dreams, his own you know, idea that he could become a very wealthy, high-placed politician by doing this. But of course, later on with the disaster of the Donner Party and others, his cutoff was known to be a uh, sham. Then you had the gold rush, which led people to California anyway. And so he just never really achieved his dream of being president of an independent California. Why? Because Mexico ceded California to the United States at the end of the Mexican-American War in 1848 anyway, so it never became the independent republic that he had envisioned. However, he did serve as a captain in a California regiment during uh, the Mexican War and eventually sided with the Confederate States of America during the war between the states. In 1861, after the South lost, he, like a lot of other disenfranchised Confederate officers and soldiers, decided they were going to go establish their own southern territories in Brazil, and he actually jumped on this bandwagon and traveled to Brazil, later on riding the Immigrant's Guide to Brazil. So his, his whole hustle never stopped, but eventually he would contract yellow fever and die in the Virgin Islands in 18. 70 while trying to move settlers from the United States to Brazil. And that is the machinations of the madman that led to the disaster we know as the Donner Party. 
In spring of 1846, 500 wagons, including the very lavish wagon of James and Margaret Reed. I'm not even kidding. This wagon was two stories, had a bunk for all members of the family, had a built-in cook stove. This was like the Airstream of the day, and it was huge. It took eight oxen to pull this thing. But he joined up, he and the Reeds joined up with a group of nine wagons, which contained all 32 members of the Reed and Donner families. to leave out with this other extended wagon train of 500 wagons from Independence, Missouri to California on May 12, 1846. The majority of the members of this thing were, were born in Europe. They were recent immigrants to the United States or first and second generation families, and they were going to California for a new life, to get away from the snow, to get away from the 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 toil of the East, thinking there was new hope out West. With an extended family that included not only his wife, Margaret, but a stepdaughter, Virginia, who was 13, a uh, their daughter together, Patty, who was eight. They had two sons, James and Thomas, five and three, and Margaret's mother, Sarah Keyes, who would die of tuberculosis, known as consumption at the time, along the way. She was died, she died at the age of 70 and was buried uh, at a campsite known as Alcove Springs along the Oregon Trail. In addition to his family, he hired three men to drive some of the wagons. Uh, Milford Elliott, 28, James Smith, 25, Walter Heron, 25, Bayless Williams, 24 as well as some of their family, along with them serving as the cook. Along the way, the other 500 wagons split off into other journeys going other where, and you ended up with about 50 wagons that would constitute part of the Donner Reed Party, led by a explorer by the name of William H. Russell. By June 16th, they had made it to within 200 miles of the first major stop on the Oregon and California trails, Fort Laramie, Wyoming, and their wagon train had grown from others joining up. These trains would just travel cross country, and they would join up with uh, with other trains to kind of offer protection, you know, safety in numbers. And so we had several other families that joined. You had the Murphy family. You with her five children, she was a widow. You had the Pike family. You had the Breen family. And you had the Dolan family as well as the Reeds and the Donners uh, making up this 50 wagon strong train, including 60 year old George Donner and his children and wife as well. They were very unfortunate in that during that time period, Mr. Hastings was sending riders out from California to deliver copies of his immigrant guide to California and Oregon to anybody sojourning west. And the Reeds and the Donners were given a copy of this. So they read it. They read about his famous Hastings cutoff and also read his warning that the Mexican officials who officially owned California would probably not want to let them in, so they should all band together and force their way in. This guy is ridiculous. As a result of Hastings' propaganda and the fact that he said he would be meeting them at Fort Bridger, they would he would lead them personally through his shortcut. So they decided that was the best way to go. So the entire wagon train of 50 wagons reached Little Sandy River just before Fort Bridger, and half the wagons opted to follow the established Oregon Trail or California Trail instead of the Hastings Cutoff. Several scouts, including a journalist by the name of Edwin Bryant, had already ridden part of that trail and come back with the opinion that it was very hard for oxen to, to travel, that perhaps you could do it if you were on foot, but wagons and oxen would have a very hard time getting across it. There were hostile Native Americans, and there were other things that uh, just would not make that Hastings cut off very appealing and to stick to the established trail. However, officials at Fort Bridger, because their trading posts that they had established along the new Hastings cut off would benefit more from them going that way than the established trail. They decided to conceal 
the warnings from the Donner Reed party. And therefore, on July 31st, 1846, after four days at the Black Forks River near Fort Bridger, they decided to take the Hastings Cutoff. And so a small party, they turned south onto the Hastings Cutoff, and James Reed was very, very happy about his decision. He figured the extra time would allow them to make up for the very distinct error that they left Independence, Missouri too late. They should have been on the uh, trail by March or April, but did not leave until May. So they figured this would make them up some very valuable time. However, just a few days into the trek, they found that the terrain was <laughs> much too rough for oxen and uh, wagons, and that they were only moving a scant two to three miles a day. They found it so treacherous that wagon axles were breaking, wheels were breaking, and the oxen just found it generally too rough to be able to pull easily. Upon learning that Hastings himself was leading a wagon train of the Harlan Young Party nearby, uh, August 6th, like I said, they've only been moving two to three miles a day, so they are already two weeks, almost two weeks into this journey and are not making good time at all. James Reed, along with two scouts by the name of Charles Stanton and William Pike, rode to find Hastings to hopefully bring him back to help them get out of this situation. But um, on their scouting mission, Reed decided to turn back to go check on his family and left Stanton and Pike resting at a camp. He returned without any guides, and they decided to continue following the Hastings route when several other members of the party argued with Reed, wanting them to turn back toward Fort Bridger and take the more established California or Oregon route. However, they listened to Reed. They continued on the Oregon, uh, they continued on the Hastings uh, cutoff, and their progress slowed from two to three miles a day to just one and a quarter miles a day. All able-bodied men that were able to work, and some women, were heaving rocks out of the way, clearing brush, pulling the oxen through to even make up that much time. Finally, by August 20th, two and a half, three weeks later, they managed to reach a break in the mountain terrain where they could see the Great Salt Lake Desert, and it took them another two weeks to get to it. So now they are five almost six weeks into this shortcut that was supposed to save them about three to four weeks. And it was at this point that the men in the group began to argue because uh, food was beginning to run out. Uh, they were moving much slower than anticipated. And uh, they actually located Stanton and Pike, who had gotten lost trying to find Hastings, and they were starving to death, about to eat their horses when they were finally found by the rest of the party. All of this does not lead them to look very fondly on James Reed. August 30th, they found a tattered uh, letter from Hastings himself warning them to take another path that the terrain ahead would take about two days to traverse, and they could possibly run out of food and water, but they were already fatigued, they were already there, they decided to do it. Uh, <clears throat> They unfortunately uh, found that the tattered terrain around the Salt Lake Desert uh, was very salt-like. It was very crumbly, and their wagons uh, encountered a new obstacle of sinking into the dirt when they tried to cross it, and they uh, slowed down even further. Several of them became ill along the way. They began uh, having... Uh, hallucinations of water, you know, mirages. Uh, some of the animals became so weak that they had to be taken off the yoke and abandoned because they just could not feed them, couldn't water them. Uh, nine of Reed's ten oxen that were pulling his caravan of wagons, their two-story wagon was long since lost, uh, broke free, they were crazy with thirst, and they bolted off into the desert. So he lost most of his oxen just from uh, them hallucinating and them not having uh, water. So far to this point, no one except uh, the, the grandmother that died just a little while into the journey has 
past. But they finally made it uh, the entire 80 miles of the Great Salt Lake Desert uh, shortcut. It was now that Reed began to exert control over the party. He ordered all families to submit food and supply inventories to him so it could be delegated amongst everyone. And finally, they had a bit of good luck. They began to pick up speed and actually made it to what is now known as the Humboldt River in Nevada and had finally gotten out of the shortcut, which had taken them six weeks longer than it would have if they had just taken the regular California or Oregon Trail. It is now September 26th, and the first mussings of fall and winter are beginning to blow across the mountains and the prairies of the West. They actually joined up with a couple of uh, Native Americans from the Paiute tribe, and uh, unfortunately these Native Americans did not want them in their land, i.e. the original warnings about hostile Native Americans, and they ended up killing and stealing several of the oxen and horses. Uh, this slowed them down even further, and by now they are into October. And it was here that the Donners decided to split off from the rest of the uh, wagon train and take their two wagons to try to make better time. And it was that same day that two wagons remaining in the original Reed party became tangled in some tall, tall grass. The driver, by the name of Snyder, became so angry he began mercilessly beating the oxen. Uh, Margaret Reed, who was uh, James Reed's wife, tried to intervene. She was struck, and that caused Reed to lose his temper and stab Snyder to death. Because they were technically in Mexican territory, American laws did not apply, and there was some discussion about what to do with Reed. Some wanted to hang him because he was very unpopular since he had been the one to, you know, kind of push them to take this route. But instead, they banished him unarmed into the wilderness. Uh, his stepdaughter, Virginia, did uh, ride ahead secretly and leave a rifle and some food for him, and he left the group. And it was at this time that distrust began to take over, and uh, families became for themselves. They were not, uh, did, did not consider themselves a unified bunch. As they moved deeper into Nevada, towards California, into the Sierra Nevadas, it became almost impossible for the oxen and horses to pull wagons, supplies, and humans. So they ordered everyone to walk to lessen the. Uh, strain on the animals in most of the groups. Uh, there was a tale of a 70-year-old man by the name of Hardcoop who was ejected from a wagon. Uh, they told him he either had to walk or die. He walked as far as he could, but eventually his feet became so swollen that they were splitting open, and he just sat down next to a stream and stayed there. Most suspected he froze to death. Meanwhile, Reed caught up with George Donner and his family, and they rode together further into the mountains. Uh, they eventually uh, had over a hundred of their uh, oxen and cattle stolen or shot by the Paiute Native Americans, and they were just in a bad way, still trying to reach Sacramento or Sutter's Fort, as it's known. They eventually made it to Truckee Lake and decided to do one final push through the mountains to get to California, and that was what is now known as Donner's Pass. It was a huge... A 1,000-foot vertical slope, uh, the entire mountain range was 7,000 feet in elevation, but they had to push through this one final area to get to warm, sunny California. Uh, they were told that it would not snow there until mid-November. It now being October 20th, they decided to make a one final push for it, and they did. However, there was uh, several injuries and deaths from accidental gunshots. However, when they arrived, they realized that it was already snowing and huge drifts were starting to form. So the families had no choice but to turn back for Truckee Lake and the Donners camped a few miles away from other families known as the Breens, the Gra Graves, the Reeds, the Murphys, and the Kesenberg and Eddie families all set up winter camp at Truckee Lake to wait out the coming snows. Sixty people 
camped around Truckee Lake that winter of 1846-1847 in hastily built cabins and lean-tos with leather roofs. Very little uh, food remained. And so they just, including some supplies that some scouts had got ahead to Sutter's, uh, to Sacramento to get. So they were just in a really bad way, y'all. Of the people camped there, 19 were men over 18, 12 were women, 29 were children, uh, six of whom were toddlers or younger. So not a very hardy pioneer a group here. And they were all uh, facing up for a series of winter storms that would last six to eight days in duration. In desperation, uh, many of them began to eat the roofs, the, the leather roofs that they had put on their lean-tos and in a desperate attempt to stay alive as there was no wild game, no vegetation of any kind available. Deeper into December, January, a party of 17 men, women, and children set out on foot to try to cross Donner's Pass and hopefully get help from a nearby Sacramento. These would be known as the members of the Forlorn Hope Party. They had ragtag snowshoes that they constructed out of whatever they could find. They packed six days worth of the lean rations that they had. They had a rifle, a blanket, a hatchet, and some pistols. And they were going to try to make their way through Donner's Pass. Uh, the snowshoes provided very little protection. Uh, they were not prepared for the phenomenon known as being snow blind, which is when the sunlight reflects off of white snow and can actually have a almost per a permanent blinding effect on people. And they became uh, very lost and confused and ended up, many of them died from exposure, starvation, and this was the first party that through the written record that we have, the many journals of uh, Patrick Breen and others that we know this was the first group to actually eat the flesh of those that had died around them. Uh, eventually, they did make it to a Native American camp, which offered them kind of an acorn pine nut mush that they ate, and they were able to rest and recoup there, and eventually turned back for Truckee Lake, making it there 33 days later. Meanwhile, James Reed and another pioneer by the name of McCutcheon did make it out of the Sierras uh, into Sutter's and was able to mount a rescue party to go back. However, some of the guides they hired deserted them, but eventually, eventually, in February, March, they were able to get back to the camp at Truckee Lake and did not find uh, very much there. Uh, a lot of very sick, dying people when they got there. Uh, a lot of illness. George Donner himself had a gangrene arm from a injury he had sustained while trying to secure some lean-tos. Margaret Reed herself she was too weak to even carry her two youngest children back across the mountain, so she had to leave them behind in the care of another family member. And they were able to mount second and third waves of rescue into the Donner Party, and by the end of March, all that were still alive had been rescued. Of the 87 people that tried to traverse the mountains, only 48 remained alive, including all of the Reed family and, and Breen family. Most of the Donners had succumbed to the, the starvation and the cold, which is why we are often referred to this as the Donner Party instead of the Donner Reed Party. What was the aftermath of this? Well, uh, Hastings' cutoff was never used again, uh, but not much happened to him. As you said, he went on to pull his uh, whole uh, heist again with the uh, people from the South that wanted to go to Brazil. Uh, but Donner State Park became a thing. Later on, I've actually been there uh, near Truckee, California. It is a memorial to what happened there. There is a huge monument that is built two feet high, which commemorates the remains of the Donner Reed party that shows that the snow actually got to 22 feet high. So this was an amazing series of blizzards that this family, these families endured. But we all know that uh, some of the mistakes that have happened uh, 
in the past. People aren't, aren't perfect. They often make mistakes. And I think the Donner Party was one of the worst and best examples of that. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the scenery here. Please go check out uh, the channels of the people that provided this scenery for me. I'll list them below. And until next time, keto and crime out. They turned sad.